Ten or dozen here. That's great. Thank you for being with us, you guys. And thank you for serving the good old America, the United States of America. And we're here today to serve the Lord and be thankful for what he's done. Um, I just want to welcome everybody then to uh, the, the Veterans Memorial Service, we call this, right, Dave? And uh, I'm going to introduce Brother Dave Anderson in just a minute. I'm going to have a word of prayer first. But uh, this is a very special time, and I want you to enjoy the testimony of the man that's going to be speaking. And uh, keep him in prayer and keep all of our veterans in prayer, wherever they may be right now. Amen? Amen. So I've done my welcome. Now I'd like to just have a word of prayer, okay? Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. We're almost ready for prayer. Okay, I guess we're okay. Father God, we come in the precious name of Jesus. And Lord, I just want to say thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for our freedom, Lord. Our freedom in Christ, but also our freedom as a nation, uh, as America. Lord, thank you. that Help us never to take it for granted. They say America is free. And it is. But freedom isn't free. Somebody paid a price for our freedom. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you for that freedom. Thank you for every family represented here today. Thank you for every veteran that's here that might be listening somewhere in the country or across the world. And I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that we can fellowship around your word. And all this good music yeah. with a message. Amen. So we have a master of ceremonies that's been on our staff for quite a few years. And he's a Vietnam veteran by the name of David Lee Anderson. We call him Dave Anderson. Some people call him Pastor Bear. I don't know if he likes that anymore because he's becoming a teddy bear. <laughs> but uh, he used to think he was a grizzly bear. But anyway, we're glad that Dave was part of us. I ask you to pray for his health isn't so good. Our sound man Bob uh, back there, pray for his health too. They're both on oxygen sometimes. So I just want to say thank you for being here. And uh, I'm going to bring up Dave Anderson, Pastor David Lee Anderson, to the, to the podium here. And he's going to take it from here. So pay attention for the next hour and see what goes on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Dave. We've been blessed yeah, in a beautiful day. But we've also been blessed a million times over by the sacrifices of our American GIs. Male or female, they all stepped up and you know, said, I will defend you. I will keep you free. Okay. Today we're honoring just a few of them. A little bit of honor for the Civil Service Cross, the first recipients. Let me rephrase that. Not a lot of honor. Nobody intends to win a Medal of Honor. We do not go into the military to win medals. We are, that's the last thing we want to do. And there's one that nobody wants, but they're proud of. And that's a Purple Heart. Being wounded. We're proud of it. But, uh, we didn't, we didn't go out looking for it. The enemy did. No. Men of Honor recipients, uh, Distinguished Service Cross recipients and uh, Navy Cross recipients. All from Beloit, all Beloit Beloiters. Some came back to Beloit, some moved on after we got out. Uh, if you want to check some history, I go, a Beloit should be added to Beloit history, is Hometown veterans, hometown memorial veterans on Bonnet. It left every county, every city in the state, and every state in the United States of who 
have been awarded what? This is how I found out about these men here today. You know, I shot my mouth off for a while. Uh, I mean, we called Mr. Will Kruger to do our national anthem. And he would arrive, and veterans in 19, in eight, no, 2016, any military personnel, veterans, in or out of uniform, can render a hand salute during the National Anthem. Thank you, Al. I didn't catch it. Oh, in or out of uniform, you're a vet, you can render a hand salute. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light was so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Brad Liggett from the, from the White Party Apartment. He's been on his, uh, in the service for about 23 years. And uh, if you go to the White Party Apartment website and read his bio, he's done a lot for the city, he's done a lot for the department. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be with you today to uh, recognize our veterans and to celebrate Christ and uh, His Word. I appreciate uh, all of you being here and uh, uh, making a difference in Beloit and making this a wonderful place to live. On behalf of the City Council and the City Manager of the City of Beloit, I have a proclamation for you today to honor these veterans. And it's my honor to present it. Official proclamation, whereas the veterans of our armed services deserve the highest degree of respect for their patriotic acts, and whereas the armed services include Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, and whereas all of the men and women in our armed forces give the ultimate sacrifice to our country by serving here and abroad in these entities. And whereas often these great men and women are not recognized for their sacrifice, and today we hope to honor them through community-wide celebration, and whereas we especially honor all of our local veterans, including the following natives of Beloit. <coughs> Medal of Honor recipient, John Baxter Kinney, for action in the Philippine insurrection. Yay! Distinguished Service Cross recipients, Ray C. Dickup, World War I, and Winfred Lloyd, World War I. Yeah. James C. Hicks, World War I, and William 
each Hotchkiss Korean War. Finally, Navy Cross recipients Randall Dub, or excuse me, John W. Randall, World War II, and Theodore O. Erickson, World War II. And whereas not only these veterans be honored and respected for their great sacrifice to our country, but also revered for the lives they live selflessly in service of others. And whereas we thank those who care for our wounded warriors through the provision of health and human services, and all those who befriend them as a good neighbor. Now therefore, the President of the Blade City Council does hereby urge all citizens to fly our flag, to recognize the importance of our veterans, the service of men and women in armed services of our country here and abroad. The significance of sacrifice that these remarkable individuals have provided. Presented this August 5th, 2018, Kevin D. Levy, Council President. It's my honor to be with you today and uh, it was an honor to serve in the United States Navy Reserve. It's an honor to serve as your fire chief. And um, this is a wonderful place to live. And this organization and everyone who has been a great uh, really has a positive impact on the future of this town. And I can tell you, after over 30 years being on the, on the department and in this community, um, we've got a bright future. <laughs> And you're all part of that. Thank you again. Thank you, Chief Lincoln. Appreciate it. Uh, I a good friend of ours, a little fly cop of mine. He's, uh, well, among our brothers, we call, we call him an Airedale. Flame for Air Force. <laughs> we were the lovers, Dave. <laughs> you guys were the fighters. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We slept in nice warm beds while you slept in the mud. Which I wouldn't have. Here's because when I sit down, you see that's my legs start sweating. Okay. No, I have only do a number. Yeah. Uh, he mm -hmm. told me a name of one, I better throw it. Listen to it. Yeah, it does include every day of life. Yes. And we've got to thank folks and the family. Yes. Through it all. Listen to the words. And if you've got internet access, you want to play it again? Do it. Listen to it. Let it talk to you. I played it four or five times. And each time I picked up with something a little different. Well, yeah, this uh, next song that I'm going to do is called Through It All, as uh, Pastor Dave was saying. And, and uh, it's, it's got some uh, meaning. Uh, I think when I wrote it, I didn't really have in mind anything in particular, but it just kind of wrote itself. And I think it talks to those of us that are going through struggles, but it also talks to the men and women that served and been through battle and come back with uh, not only physical scars, but mental scars as well. Feel the breeze as it blows In a moment of time What the cold winds of fortune have left you to leave all that behind so you look out ahead with a compass to guide chart a course with your reckoning wisdom that faith will then provide you remember the sorrow of being alone and the strength that had lifted and carried you home. Persistence and faith that will not let you fall through it all. And the 
challenge ahead in pursuing your path. But the stealer of dreams will remind you of what was in your past. There's a passion that burns with a fire and flame. Find a way for a chance of forgiveness to all who you have blamed. You remember the sorrow of being alone and the strength that has lifted and carry you home. Persistence and faith that will not let you fall through it all. We can rest in our pain, cry and pick at our wounds, but the force of our faith can move mountains and conquer what may loom. We remember the dead and their sacrifice paid. To ensure all our comforts and freedoms we live now, day to day. Light a candle for those who are lost and then one. And the soldier who stands to protect with his gun all the fear and the challenge. The fight for the cause, for it all. The sorrow of being alone And the strength that has lifted and carried you home Persistence and faith that will not let you fall Through it all guess I would, it's hard for me to turn down an opportunity to say a few more words, you know, <laughs> because there must be a reason I was supposed to say a few more words. I guess my challenge would be, like we talked about this morning, be thankful, be very thankful for all things. The Bible teaches us to be thankful in all things. It really doesn't say it's to be thankful for all things. Should I be thankful for cancer? Should I be thankful for sickness and problems, but I can be thankful in spite of them. I can be thankful in them. Amen? Does that make sense? And the other thing I just want to, if, if this were my last message, I would like to say, let's love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. If we could just learn to love one another more, and forgive. I mean, we're so taught, we're taught to forgive, man. We're taught to not hold grudges. You know, we're taught to be kind to one another, right? One of my favorite country songs is by, uh, I forget his name, but Be Humble and Kind. Tim just, McGraw. Tim McGraw, look it up. <laughs> be Humble and Kind. And uh, I just think that if we can be humble and kind, I think we'd have a better world. And if we just... You know, if we just practice what Jesus taught us to do, we'd be in good shape. Amen. So I think we're in good shape here in America if we just focus on our relationship with God and Jesus, through Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the way it is. So I want to say thank you to the volunteers that have made this possible. Sometimes I wonder, is it worth it to go to all this work? 
put up with the winds, but yeah, we yeah. always, it's worth it, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah. No hesitation. So, by the grace of God, we'll be here next week, I mean next year. <laughs> and and next, next, uh, next week, by the way, we should be back at the Overflowing Cup on Madison Road. And I uh, wish I could tell you exactly who we have coming, but we got some good stuff lined up. Every Saturday night is good Christian. It's much more than entertainment. But we got musical concerts. That's the way we book it. Sometimes if the band don't show up, we just do ministry of one kind or another. But I do want to say this, that uh, Sunday night we have a service. And, uh, you know, I believe this. There's one body of Christ. We just don't all fit under one roof. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why we got so many different churches, but um, there's really only one. And if you want to attend our evening services like a bunch of you do, tell your friends and bring a friend. God bless you. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. I don't know if Brother Dave was just kind of killing time, but I do think... Uh, um, oh, he did give me another chance to speak. I didn't know you planned it this way. I thought this was off-the-cuff stuff. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, Dave, bless his heart. He's very organized and uh, very creative. He designs most of our brochures and our certificates and things like that. Um, so thank you, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, you know, some of these veterans should really write a book or put a movie on or something. But uh, I can't imagine this little teenager going overseas and shooting people in Vietnam. But that's it's unbelievable, isn't it? And he don't want to be reminded of that. But the thing about it is, our kids are going overseas. And, uh, yeah. uh, I was too old. No, I was young enough, but uh, President Kennedy wouldn't let married people be drafted. So thank you, President Kennedy. <laughs> God bless you, and thank you, Brother Dave Anderson. For both of you who got a program, uh, you will see that Terry Kenner was scheduled to play. Due to the family emergency of a fire, oh. uh, his girlfriend's sister was totally burned out. So we're down there, down at Elgin picking up stuff and all of this. Because we lost everything they had. So, uh, and this morning in a mad rush, I messaged Cheryl McQuarrie, and I said, oh, man, I know this is last minute, but do you think you could? <laughs> and she would like that more an honor to you. And, uh, yeah. and I thank her from the bottom of my heart, Sherry. Dedicate this to all the veterans today.
bless you all. That's on my new CD, by the way. Please go. Thank you. I greatly appreciate this last minute. We yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. People say it's a bad thing to put a microphone in, in front of you. You don't know who's the word for talking a mic. Me or Pastor Dave. Here to hop back there. No, I didn't. Even. It's all those Davids. <laughs> Something about Davids. Yeah. No. Many of our Beloit youth from the start of the city years and years ago to today, many of our youth have gone on into our military to protect our city, our state, and our country. And it's sad to say, some have paid the ultimate price and sacrifice. Even this war we've got going on now, we lost a Beloiter, one from Clinton, I believe just one from Broadhead. Boy, it hit home. Yeah. And there's only violent and news or not, I don't know how much it was about it in the news. But there's been 55 sets of remains returned from North Korea. So that kind of put us up since the end of the Korean War in 1953, almost 600 remains returned. There's still a lot more to go. Men and women do many things in the military. Some is our job, some we do for entertainment. And something we do and on the spur of the moment, not thinking about it, not thinking about ourselves. In the service, you probably heard this on TV if you, if you follow NCIS, I got your fix, or I got your back. In combat, your brother, to make Next to you. He has your back, and you have the guy next to him, his back. We cover each other. And sometimes, covering for each other is above and beyond the call of duty. With how these men we are, are honoring today, have received the recipients of these awards. They went above and beyond the call of duty. They didn't worry about themselves. They worried about their brother to get them home, to get them out of that area. And I am especially honored today, extremely honored, to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Al Lynch, Medal of Honor recipient from Vietnam. Here, here. Hoo-ha! Thank you. Hoo-ha! It's, um, it's kind of funny because I don't want to talk about the war or anything. I want to talk about my coming home a little bit. There we go. Short people. You know, they got no people, business. You know, some people are vertically challenged. Some people are follically challenged. The song about that. But, uh, I actually shaved my head because when you got this, why cover it with hair? Am I right? <laughs> You know, a, a lot of people
people want me to talk about, you know, Vietnam and what did you do and all of that. But what's important is, is one of the World War II veterans, I, I do put it, he said, you know, earning the Medal of Honor is done in the heat of the moment. It's done under extreme pressure. And if you had time to think about it, you may not actually do it. And I can tell you that for a fact, because every time I think about what they told me I did, I keep asking myself, what in the world were you thinking, boy? Because that was, that was one of the dumbest things I ever heard you do. And I did, I did a lot of dumb things. So I don't want to talk about that too much. What I want to talk about is coming home. And I want to talk about trauma, the trauma that many of us suffered not maybe as a result of war, but maybe just as a result of life, maybe as a result of the something that happened to you. But I want to tell you my story about how I got through some of these things. So I got back from Vietnam and everything was going great. Got married a year to the day after I got out of the Army, April 25th, 1970 is when I got married. I got out of the Army April 25th, 1969. Life was good. We got married the day I was going to get married, the day before, as we get married for our rehearsal dinner, I was told I was going to get this. I was on a path. It was great. I was going to get the Medal of Honor. I had a great job. I was marrying a great wife. We'll be married 50 years in two years. Yeah. And it was great. And then I got the Medal of Honor and I got asked to do the best job in the world, work for the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, helping veterans. Wonderful. I was helping Vietnam returnees and then I was helping Vietnam veterans or veterans in the VA hospital. I was a benefits counselor. I was a drug counselor. I was doing all of this great stuff. And then one day in 1973, my little boy was just getting ready to be a year old. And I was coming home from work and it was raining. It was hot like it is today and it was muggy and there was a flash of lightning and a crack of thunder. And I ended up on the ground. And that started, well, that started that something that hasn't finished yet. I started having problems. You know, a lot of kids today, a lot of the new veterans, they want to call it post-traumatic stress. For me, it was post-traumatic stress disorder. To me, calling it something like post-traumatic stress is like putting lipstick on a pig. I don't want to make post-traumatic stress disorder nice. I don't want to make it friendly. It's the dragon that I've been fighting since 1973. It's kind of like if you like fantasy, and I do, I, I like Lord of the Rings, it's kind of like the dragon smog. You know, I fight it, and we all of us that have PTSD, all of us that have had a trauma that keeps coming back, we fight that thing every single day of our lives. In Vietnam, I was Catholic. I was saying the rosary. I was reading my Bible when I got back from Vietnam. I kind of went in a different path because the Catholic Church that I love had changed. But I kept reading my Bible and one day my dad who had a problem with alcohol called me up and he said I got saved. And I was angry. See I never got the strike of lightning that he got. I never got that punch in the face that he got. I've been Christian for a while, but I never got that. And my dad was starting to quote scripture to me. I've been reading my Bible a lot, and he'd quote chapter and verse and talk to me about what this meant and bring out his strong, exhaustive concordance. And back then, I can carry that on my phone today. But back then, that was a big honking book. And he'd bring that out and tell me what something meant the Greek and the Hebrew and all of that. And I was mad, I was angry. So I started studying, but I didn't study to learn about the Lord. I studied to argue with my dad. See, I was, I was saved up here. And I knew that Christ died for me. I knew that, but I didn't get the flash of lightning and the crack of thunder and the punch in the gut and the punch in the face. I didn't get none of that stuff. As my dad would say, it was probably all head knowledge. And so I studied. 
And I started thinking about grace. You know, I'm saved by grace. By grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself, lest anyone should boast. Well, I took that as a license to go out and have a few drinks. I mean, what's great for if you can't use it? My pastor would call that cheap grace. But then I started getting depressed. And I started having problems with PTSD again. It came up again. And it would go away and it would come up. And it would go away and it would come up. And I'd get so, so depressed that sometimes I, I just didn't want to be here anymore. But I had, by this time, I we were working on a family. I had a little boy, had a little girl, and had another little boy. And, you know, luckily they never got to see the inside of me. Isn't it great that some people cannot see the inside of us? Isn't that wonderful? Because if you would have saw the inside of me back then as I was preaching at some churches and teaching Bible studies and all that, you wouldn't have liked what you saw. And I did a lot of bad things when I was depressed and when I was drinking way too much. I slipped away from God, but He didn't slip away from me. See? And I started getting help. I started going to therapy because I tried to do it on my own and I couldn't do it by myself. So I started getting therapy for my PTSD. And she started giving me some tools. And then about the mid-90s, I started to get my faith back. Not that I ever really lost it, but you know, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like grabbing this, you know? It's there, you know it's there, but you just can't grab onto it, and that was me. And to make a long story a little bit shorter, a whole lot shorter, to get my head together and to think things out, I used to go for a walk in the woods. And one day, it had to be about 90, 97, 98, I was, I was on one of my favorite trails. And the guilt of what I had been doing all my life fell on me like a lead jacket. There were things that had happened in my family, things that were going on, and it just, it just fell on me. And I got down on my knees and I prayed and I said, I want to be a better man. I don't want to continue to do what I'm doing. I've got to get it right. And it was kind of funny. I almost half expected to have that bolt of lightning. <laughs> but God don't deal with me like that. But God, the way God deals with me is it's one step at a time. It's just one step at a time, one little thing at a time. Close to that period, my wife went to a church. Now, I left the church because I got tired of little kids running up and down the aisle. I got tired of little kids out preaching the preacher. I come from, I'm, I'm kind of Lutheran by background now because that's my wife. You know, Lutherans, we don't, we don't do anything in church. We sit, we shut up, we sing, and then we shut up, and then the preacher preaches. And that's the way it is. Yes, now, there are other churches that I've been to that don't do it quite like that. You all know what that is. So, I started going to church. The next thing, I was leading a Bible study. And then we started a men's group. And we developed a prison ministry. And then I retired. And I started working harder when I retired than when I was working. I'm still trying to figure that one out. And each step along the way, God has, has, has brought me along. And the one thing that I've learned is that if you allow it, if you let it happen to you, God can use every bad thing in your life to build His church and to build you. In 2006, my daughter-in-law, who had never smoked a cigarette, never hung out in bars, was diagnosed with lung cancer. She had three kids, and it was a death sentence. She died five years later. 
In 2008, my granddaughter Kaylin was born and she was born with severe birth defects. The doctor said that she would not live eight days. She's now 10 years old. She's severely retarded, but she is the light of my life. And she has done everything that these doctors told us that they, she would never ever do. And through all of that trial and trouble and tribulation, we had that peace that passes all understanding because God was working through this trauma to build my family, to build my children. My son Brian and Kelly with Kaylin showed me things that I never dreamed that he would do. I do have to tell you one quick funny story. Brian, six foot two, used to be a bouncer. And one doctor came in and was suggesting that they do a DNR on her. Do not resuscitate, just let her go. And all six foot two of him stood up with biceps I only wish I had. And suggested that the doctor might want to change his attitude. I want to leave you with this. Everything in your life, everything in your life, no matter what it is, good or bad, can be used by the Lord to not only better you, but better His kingdom. For all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Thank you. And your message, uh, I will lay out, touched a lot of people, and you've got me thinking. with one problem I'm having right now with PT. I've been by checking into, checking with the uh, poison house for a few weeks. Vacation. Again, uh, this is coming to an end. Uh, Pastor Terry was supposed to do closing prayer. Cheryl just graciously offered to do a closing prayer for us. Ben, Eric, my firing squad got called out to a memorial service. For a memorial service. So that took priority. Which I ran under firing squad details? Yes. No objection. Uh, Dave Brown suggested a person to play taps, and he has a curl concert today, so he couldn't. And just for out of the blue, I asked Terry and the guys if they could download taps from uh, YouTube or something. Terry said, oh, I can do that in synthesizer. But, huh, you can what? Okay. Remain standing for taps. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this wonderful testimony that was presented by both gentlemen today. Father, we thank you that we live in a free country. You've given us freedom in America. As I sang just before that, God bless America. We are so grateful for the blessings and the abundance that you have given to this country. We do pray for all of our men and women in our military across the board. Those who have gone on before us, those who are still with us, and those who are approaching to go into any type of military rank of any sort. We thank you for their heart, their sacrifice, their willingness to die for our country if need be. But Father, we thank you for the men and women who have sacrificed and all of those who are still with us, Lord, let us not forget them. And also other various dignitaries and representatives and officials in this country, from our police officers to our firemen who spoke earlier, to every military, to every EMT and doctors and our military, Lord God, across the board. We thank you again for those in office and in our offices as well. We thank you for our government. We thank you for our president. We thank you for those, Lord God, in high offices. We thank you for our pastors, and we thank you for those that have gone on, Lord God, who have given and diligently served our country. Father, we thank you for every man, woman, or child, that you will minister 
to each one. We thank you for even our, our speaker of the day. Lord, that you will minister again and thank you for the healing of the PTSD. We thank you for restoration in mind, body, and spirit for everyone that is battling any type of depression or even suicide at this moment in my life, in my voice right now. We pray against that spirit of depression. But we thank you, Father, that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our great provider. You are our great healer. And Father, again, we thank you, Father God, that we can serve and we can sing God bless America and we can sing the national anthem without bowing down. We will stand strong for our country. We will stand strong for America. And we will press forward as Christian soldiers, men and women and children, to walk forth that race set before us. Father, we are grateful again for this day. Thank you for freedom in America as we thank you and give tribute with the, with the uh, sounding of taps. God bless in the name and the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you. 